log date September what fucking day is it whatever I don't even fucking know uh year 2020 <sighs> fuck where do I even begin with this one one of the shortest cases I've had in a while but so much happened in just one day guess I'll pick up where I left off in an earlier log two logs ago the last full log I finally arrived in Evergrove this morning and headed straight to the address detailed in the email I received. There I met with Miss Joan and uh, some kin named Evie. I hadn't expected her, but they were both pretty insistent that I let her tag along. I had my reservations, for obvious reasons. No hunter in their right damn mind is just okay with a teenager following them around while work on a case, but I could tell I didn't really have a choice. It was let the kid come or drop the case, and I really couldn't afford to drop the case. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure Evie was threatening to stab me if I didn't let her come, so you know, there was that. Before I left, Joan explained what I had already mostly gathered from my research. The people who had gone missing weren't really locals as much as people who had either just moved in or were just visiting, at least mostly. So clearly what, whatever was doing this wasn't just picking targets randomly. The only local at this point was Joan's grandkid, uh, Seuss, who had been working at the local blood bank. I should have paid more attention to the signs, but I got distracted. I had gathered all the info I thought I could from Joan, and then Evie and I set off for the town. Then there were the sound of sirens, and we headed in the direction of the noise. This is where the second local getting taken came in. One of the deputy's younger brother had apparently just gotten taken. It was pretty weird, since it was broad daylight, and all the signs from my research were pointing to vampires, but I guess there are more types of vampires than just the ones I'm used to. The ones that, you know, start disintegrating if put under direct sunlight. These ones seemed to be able to stand it, but they probably didn't like it. As far as I was aware, most of the people who had gone missing had done so in the night. I'm getting sidetracked, though. After watching the sheriff argue with the deputy, whose brother just went missing, I figured the deputy would probably need a minute to calm down, and also I didn't want the sheriff, uh, Martin, getting in the way. Evie said he probably wouldn't take kindly to someone from the outside trying to handle the case, so he was definitely at the top of my list of people to avoid. With that in mind, I suggested we check around the hospital since that would probably be around where Seuss disappeared from. Evie led me over there, and we investigated the area. I was correct. Or at least, I'm assuming the blood in the alleyway was from Seuss. I guess it could have been from something or someone else, but I had to take any possible clues I could get. This is where my second-to-last short log ties in. <sighs> so can't believe the fucking kid tried to make fun of me for recording the evidence. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Stop getting sidetracked. Uh, it was at this point that Evie and I tracked the deputy down. We tried talking to her, hoping that she'd be willing to accept help since it was so personal, but she just slammed the door in our faces. Real nice lady. What was her name? Sylvia, I think. Doesn't matter. I did get what little conversation we got recorded in my last log, but it wasn't like she gave us any new information. It was starting to get dark, but considering the talking to the deputy didn't work out, we decided that maybe we could investigate her house, since that seemed to be where her brother disappeared from. 
we walked back over there, and when we arrived, that's when shit hit the fucking fan. See, they did have the other deputy posted up on the front porch, presumably to keep people from trying to tamper with the crime scene, but he wasn't really any match for the feral vampire that jumped out of nowhere and tackled him. He was lucky that we arrived right then, and that I'd already been on edge and ready for an encounter, because if I hadn't shot that vampire off of him, he probably would have been vampire food. There were three vampires in total. I maybe could have taken them down right then and there if Evie hadn't ran off. I mean, sure, she's a kid, but she had a fucking sword, but whatever. But two of the three got away. I guess it's probably a good thing at least one got away, in hindsight, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that later. One of the vampires got frozen. I didn't know why yet, but I'll still- that's another thing I'll get back to later. I checked up on the deputy. He wasn't dead, so like, good for him, I guess. He was a little beat up, but I mean, he's a cop, so I didn't really feel all that bad. Then, Joan pulled up in her truck, and she insisted I grab the deputy and the frozen vampire and come with her. It was pretty weird, but not the weirdest thing, I guess. Ended up arguing with her a bit when we got back to her place, since she had been withholding some information that really could have helped me if she just come forward with it with forward with it immediately. But again, it's whatever. I mean, she's an old lady. I guess I should go easy on her. Maybe she just didn't think about it. I don't know. I'm not old. I don't know how old people work. Anyways, Evie was still missing. She never made it back to the house, and it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that she had probably gotten taken. I just, I just knew she had been. And that made it two kids taken in one day, which really just put the pressure on to end this as soon as possible. Luckily, I was able to, you know, do stuff and things and I uh, tracked down one of the two vampires that got away, the one I had shot off the deputy, and it led me to the old abandoned mines. I was a little wary to go in alone, but it's not like I had much of a choice. I had to do this alone, or so I thought. As it turns out, I wasn't alone. I managed to find my way through the mine, and I found the vampire's nest. For the first time in the six years I've been investigating, this is the first case where I've ever encountered a full-fledged vampire, and, well, I'd like to think I acted braver than I felt. I hope that's how I came across anyways. The vampire didn't attack me immediately, though. Didn't even have its minions attack me. So I started making my way over to Evie. As this was happening, the weirdest fucking thing happened. I'm used to a lot of things at this point, but someone running in with a flaming axe is definitely new. This person just gave no shit, but they almost cut off the vampire's leg in one swing and he dropped Evie's sword that he must have taken from her. Fucking wild. This gave me enough of a distraction to make it all the way over to Evie. It was... well, it was too late to save her, but she wasn't gone yet. I gave her my knife so she could defend herself. She ran over to check on Seuss, and I went over to the deputy's brother... Sebastian, I think. He was luckier than Evie. It wasn't too late for him, and I was able to just shoo him out of the situation. And while that happened, the person who had that flaming axe suddenly had a shotgun, and they shot the vampire in the face. Didn't kill the vampire, they're tougher than that, but it definitely got him even more off his game. The whole situation was so wild, I did something I didn't even think I would have if things had gone any other way. 
I ran over, picked up the kid's sword, the vampire had dropped, and just impaled the fucker with it. Honestly, I was surprised I was even able to pick it up, but that's adrenaline for you, I guess. I would have killed him if the other person hadn't told me not to. I didn't like the idea, didn't want the vampire to have a chance to get away, but uh, they were pretty convincing, especially when they chopped the vampire's leg off. Kinda hard for him to get away with one leg, so I obliged their quest, strange as it was. Honestly, the vampire wasn't even that difficult. I mean, obviously, yes, he had done a lot of damage before I got there to act as damage control, but if some other hunter had come along before me, this guy clearly wasn't that powerful. Hell, he even tried to, like, mind control me or something after flame axe person cut off his leg, but it did literally nothing. I mean, I guess it almost worked, but it didn't in the end. So, you know, I just told him to shut up because honestly, I was really getting tired of getting snark from this guy. After that, I, uh, nothing. Nothing happened after that. Flamex person, who turns out to be the one who froze the vampire earlier, I guess they'd just been hiding, but was there. Uh, they froze the vampire. The Vero vampires had run off and were nowhere in sight, but with their master down for the count, they weren't really as much of a problem for the current moment. Zeus was chained down, but we managed to free them. At least enough so that we could bring them with us, and DV and I swapped weapons. I didn't really like handing her back her sword, but I wanted my knife back. And the sword was getting a bit too heavy for me with the adrenaline wearing off anyways. Flamax person carried the vampire with us, and we made our way back to Joan's place to drop off her grandkids and the captured vampire. Now that I think about it, I think Flamax person said something about maybe being able to make a cure during the, using the vampire we captured. Never heard of that before, but I have never dealt with full-fledged vampires before either. Regardless, I can only assume that's what they wanted him alive for. Joan actually, uh, she asked for us, me and the flame X person, who, now that I'm thinking about it, I think introduced themselves as Iris on my way out. Was that their name? I can't really remember. They were talking to Joan, not me, and I was halfway out the door. Uh, anyways, uh, Joan asked us to stay in town. She insisted that things would get pretty bad if we didn't, and well, it isn't exactly like I have anywhere to go. This was the first case I had gotten in months. And it was becoming harder and harder to find things that weren't already being taken care of by someone else. She even offered me a room, which, I don't know, seems way too nice of an offer. And I should learn my lesson that nothing that nice is ever what it seems on the surface. But, well, there's only one motel in this town. And despite it being on the shittier and uh, the ones I've stayed in. It's also somehow one of the most expensive ones. I'd be broke by the end of the month staying here, so I guess I don't really have a choice. Already not looking forward to this, I don't have a good feeling about any of this, but well, it doesn't matter. I'm just rambling at this point, aren't I? This isn't even got anything to do with the case. The case is closed. None of this matters. I'm tired. I'm gonna just stop now. Uh, end log. Uh, Briar Valentine out. Blooper reel. Before I left, 
Joan explained that I had a why <clears throat> fuck 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 it was uh starting to get dark but oh fuck wrong wrong portion <laughs> i cut this out then joan pulled up in her truck and i insisted i grab the deputy and the frozen vampire and come with her it was pretty weird but not the oh i think i messed that paragraph up whoops uh, then, Joan, not Joan, uh, 